In the previous video, we created an event frame template. In this video, I will show you how to add attributes to it. Let's double click on our event frame template to open it up. The attributes I want captured in an event frame will need to be defined under the attribute templates. So I will go ahead and click new attribute template. Let's talk about what things we want to capture in this particular event frame. The first thing that we want to track is the reason why the press had a downtime. It is the value of the press status attribute at the start of the problem. So I'm going to name this attribute reason code and I will give it a description as well. The status doesn't have a default unit of measure because it's a string. And for the value type, since the press status attribute was actually set up with an enumeration set to describe the running and downtime, I will choose that. In my case, I'm just matching it with my AF attributes value type. For the data reference, I will select PyPoints and then I will configure it using the settings right here. Now the PyPoint data reference, so you can set it up to directly reference a Py tag or an AF attribute. In this case, the press status is an AF attribute, so I want to use this option. However, if I use the dropdown, you will see there is nothing listed. And that's because there are no AF attributes in this event frame template. The press status attribute is actually in the element rather than the event frame template. And in order to reference the element, we will need to use a particular syntax that I will type in here. Okay, let me break this down. The dot backslash elements open square bracket dot close square bracket returns the primary referenced element. The primary reference element is essentially the asset that is linked to the event. In this example, it is the press experiencing a downtime that the event will be generated for. And then the pipe status indicates to give us the value of the attribute that has the name of press status that's under the primary referenced element. We will leave the retrieval methods by time as automatic, but we are going to make a change to this by a time range. Currently, the selection is end time, which means this attribute will be evaluated at the end of event frame. However, the event frame will be triggered when the status attribute goes into a downtime. We want to make sure that this attribute is evaluated at the start of the event frame rather than the end, where it might have switched back to be in a running state. So I will choose start time here and hit OK. I also want to capture the duration of the downtime event. So I will add a new attribute with a right click. I will give it a name and a description. And for the units of measure, I am interested in the duration being reported in minutes. So I will choose that unit of measure. And I will have this reported as a double. And I will again choose pi point and then settings. Acquiring the duration of the event frame is a little bit different because there is no attribute that describes the duration itself. However, there is a special way that you can use attribute and the value retrieval methods to get the duration. First, you will still need to pick an attribute even though there is not a specific attribute describing the duration. And you can just pick any attribute from the reference element. To make things easy, I will use the status attribute again as my reference. I will use the same syntax as before. And there are specific value retrieval methods that are needed. First, for the by time, we'll have to change that option to not support it. And then second, we'll need to choose the by time range to be reported as a count. And just one thing that you might have noticed is this will present the source units as seconds. But we know that how we selected our default unit of measure was minutes based on how we want that attribute to look. And that's fine because AF will do that unit conversion for us. You can go ahead and hit OK. The final attribute that I'm interested in capturing in this event frame is how does this downtime affect the total production and we'll do it with a formula. We know that producing one tire takes approximately 5 minutes. 
Based on the duration of the press down time, we can calculate the number of tires that could have been produced in case the press would have been running. Let's add a production loss attribute to our template. For the unit of measure, I will select the tire quantity tires. For the value type double, and for the data reference formula. Let's enter a calculation to get the number of tires with a division by 5. I will enter the event duration as my parameter and then our formula will be as simple as dividing this parameter by 5. I will now check in my changes. At this point, I am now ready to apply this template to all the pieces of equipment with a trigger condition for generating downtime events. In order to do that, I will set up Event Frames Generation Analysis, which is shown in the next video. Thanks for watching.